As you may know, I'm a big fan of model engineering. I've been doing model engineering for many years now and I've gone to various shows to see model engineers and recently I've progressed quite a lot in the field of model engineering, mostly thanks to the help of Keith Appleton, who, where I've been to his house and we've played with some engines, we've built a feed pump for the boiler, we've fixed my 10V, which I then, I then sent back. And over the years, I've shown many different model engines from the collection of Keith Appleton, from model engineering shows, from the Evening Star 92, and from engines visiting his cottage. But what about my own collection? I've done a lot of videos on it recently, but what other engines do I have in it? So today, we're going to focus on the steam engines, and in the next episode, we'll focus on the Stirling engines. So let's get started with engine number one. So, I got my first model steam engine in 2017, and it was a Mammoth SE1 steam engine, which my granddad found in his garage, which his friend gave to him a while ago. This engine ran pretty much straight away, and it's a very good runner. Recently, it started to lose power as solder became undone, and you know, it just started to lose a bit more power. So, it is currently undergoing a restoration to become the best it can be. Now, to the summer of 2018, where I purchased my first model steam engine with my own money, and it was a Mammoth SP2 off eBay. This engine is very high speed, and I didn't like that about that, but now I'm okay with it, because, quite frankly, it's fun to have a bit of high speed sometimes. Dangerous, but very fun. For the fritz size, this engine is very powerful and it's a good little power plant for anyone wanting to start off in model engineering. This engine, I don't currently run it on steam because the sight glass has got a problem, so I only run it on compressed air, but soon, once I get a rivet gun, I shall start running on steam again. Now to my birthday in December 2018, when my parents surprised me with a Mammoth TE1A traction engine. This was the first brand new steam engine I ever had, and it's also my first mobile engine and my first one with a whistle. There's a lot of firsts in that engine. It's also one of my first engines to run, to run tablets. However, the SP2 did run on tablets, so I have no idea why I just said that. This engine has forward and reverse, and it does run very well, and it still continues to run very well. A few little problems here and there, but then again, it's a man mod, what to expect. Now to Christmas 2020, the infamous 2020. I got my first double acting Walesco, and it is a D16 with a regulator and a whistle. This engine is absolutely amazing, it's such a workhorse, it's never given me any trouble, It'll, it's never failed me, and it's never needed any work done really, it just always performs when you want it to. It's such a good power plant, and I seriously recommend it. Now, into my birthday in 2021, where I got two engines, one for my parents and one for my grandparents. The one I got for my parents was a Lesco D305, which is the fire engine. This is a mobile fire engine with a working water pump and a vertical double acting steam engine and a vertical um, tube, single tube boiler. This engine is very powerful for its size, thanks to the boiler and its strong capacity. The engine can pump water like a fire engine. However, the squirt is sort of minimal, so if your house goes up in smoke, don't, don't rely on your steam engine to sort it out. But this engine, like I said, is amazing. The only problem with it is the steering gear gets slightly locked up sometimes, but that is this the only problem. Aside from that, I really couldn't recommend it more. Next is my first kit. This is the one I got from my grandparents, and it is quite new to the Walesco range, and it is the D100E. It's essentially a D5 kit with a generator and different colours. This was relatively easy to put together, a few little hard bits here and there, but it took me about two hours in total to get it going. And then on the first steaming, the cylinder fell off. But on the second steaming, it ran perfectly well. So would I recommend this as a first kit? Probably not. If you want to go for your very first kit, I suggest going for something more like the D5, which is a bit more simple. Then I didn't get any engines until New Year's 2023, when I bought the dog. Now, those who know me closely will know what the dog is. It is my first proper model steam engine, aka the Stuart 10V. I bought, I stupidly bought this for £250 off eBay to, on, by using two photographs. Honestly, what was I thinking? Well, I got it, stupidly hooked up to a Walesco boiler, and it didn't run. So, in came Keith Appleton. He invited me over, and we actually got it going for a total of 15 seconds before it broke again. Um, it, the engine was a complete mechanical failure. Um, no, there's nothing we could have done really. No, no matter how much we all tried, we couldn't get it going. Um, realistically, with the time we had, so I just got a refund from the seller. 
But with them when I got back, I got something even better. I bought the yellow S50, which is featured on so many of Keith's videos, and it is honestly easily the best running engine I have. It is very powerful, reliable, and it is, it's such a great little workhorse, and I've got so many big plans for it, but I have to watch the space for it. But there are plenty of videos of it steaming using my Stuart 501 boiler, so make sure to go check those out. Next, I got, a few months later, I bought, off Keith, a Cotswold Heritage Cirrus beam engine. This is my first proper live steam beam engine, and I've always wanted a beam engine, because obviously, as you know, I work at T's Cottage Pumping Station, and I operate the beam engine there. So it's nice to have my own little beam engine to play with when I'm not playing with the big beam engine. And it's such a good little runner. It runs can run very slowly or very fast. It's not very powerful, but it's only a small little engine, but it can still power a few little things. And I'm planning to fit a microcosm governor to it, which will hopefully regulate the speed. And the engine, unlike the S50, will not be fitted to a steam plant but I've still got a few more plans for it in the works. Now we move on we literally about a week and I bought a Mammoth, another Mammoth T1A traction engine. This was £60 from a vintage shop in Darlington. Now this engine does need a bit of work, which is why I started the How to Restore a Mammoth T1A traction engine YouTube series and last episode I completely took it apart. My plan is to customise it to look like an engine I drove in Massam a year ago. Fast forward a day after I bought the traction engine and I bought a Jensen 75 from Forest Classics. This is a second hand engine because you, because of, I don't know, maybe because of Brexit, I'm not sure, entirely sure. I can never seem to get brand new Willet Jensen's for a good price in Britain. So I settled on a second hand one and I just uploaded a video of it steaming for the first time. And it ran very well without any problems, except for a little bit, little steamings here and there. But because Jensen's a handmade, that's not a surprise. So, as of the 26th of April, 2023, that is my model steam engine collection. I've got a sneaky suspicion. I've got some in the works, which might mean there's another one coming on there, another Mammod. But I'm not saying anything just yet. Those, my close friends will know what that Mammod is. But I'm not saying anything just yet in case I don't mind, in, in case I don't get it. But thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to do a Sterling engine video soon. Don't expect many great engines there. Most of my Sterling engines have been complete failures. But, you know, they're entertaining for about 10 seconds. Before, after 10 seconds, you can't want to throw them at a wall. So, thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned.